section 2.2 separable variables which you already actually uh, learned this back in calc 1 uh, the first thing to start with this is we recall recall when we say y prime you can write as dy dx as another notation say this equals any function g of x this can be rewritten as dy equals g of x dx and then you can integrate both sides like so right so then dy the integral of dy is y and this one say it's a g of x plus c this would be the solution to that given differential equation so what i did here i separated the x's and the y's so i put the y's on one side the x's on the other side and then i solved it by integrating both sides that's why i said the first day of class said integration and differentiation are very important for this course and to apply this that's why we call it separable because you separate the x's and the y's so let's say something like um, this how do we integrate uh, or solve such a differential equation we separate them by rewriting it and then all we have to do integrate both sides the integral of dy is y the integral of 2 is 2x if you integrate as a shortcut e to the mx m is a, a real number it's always 1 over m e to the mx plus c So it's 1 over 3 e to the 3x plus c dy dx as another example try this one again this is straightforward problem then integrate both sides this is y equals what's the integral of secant square it's tangent x plus c don't forget the plus c We can look at uh, more examples. Let's say dx minus x cubed dy equals zero. How do we solve such equation? We can add this to both sides. Divide by x cubed. I always like to put the y's on the left side so you can rewrite it like so. Integrate both sides. And to do so you can bring the x 1 over x cubed up as x to the negative 3. The left hand side is y, the right hand side gives us x to negative 2 over negative 2 plus c 
then y would be negative 1 over 2x squared plus c. Make sure no negative exponents. dy dx, y minus 1 over x squared. Multiply so now, first step, we can rewrite it by swapping these two together. So what I just did, I separated the x's and the y's. We can now integrate both sides. This is natural log of this, absolute value. This one again, you can bring it up. Plus C. This stays the same, that's negative 1 over x plus c. You can leave it like this. I don't mind leaving the answer like this. But if you like to move on and, and solve for y itself, then you can drop the ln by doing e of that stuff. y minus 1 is plus or minus this. Add one to both sides. Some people like to rewrite this like so. E to the C. Splitting it up. And then what you can do. You know the E to the C is constant plus or minus. They write just plus K. E negative 1 over X. So the K is plus or minus E to the C. Any questions about this? You just write C2, 1 plus C e to the negative 1 over x. Yeah, but because you already use a C, try to use a different letter. Okay, okay. Next one. E to the x, y, dy, dx, e to the negative y. Try this one for two minutes. You can use any variable you like. Uh, the way to do this, e to the x, y, dy, dx stays the same. Here, we keep this, we can rewrite this like so. Why did we do it this way? Because now we can factor e to the negative y. That would give 1 plus e negative 2x. Then I'll try to separate the y's. Bring that e negative y down here, dy. Bring the dx up there. And e to the x down. Then what we can do, we can rewrite this by bringing this up. Here you can probably split it up e negative x, e negative 3x, and then integrate both sides. Then we need to integrate the left hand side can be integrated using integration by parts. Um, maybe u equals y. I don't know if you remember, l-i-a-t-e, 
this trick. We have algebraic and we have exponential. So u equals this du is dy and dv is e to the y dy. So v equals e to the y uv minus the integral of v du. And this is negative e negative x, negative 1 over 3 e negative 3x plus c. y e to the y minus e to the y. This stays the same, no negative exponents. And you can leave it like that. How about if they ask us to solve this differential equation subject to the initial value problem condition y of 1 is 0 y of 1 is 0 One way to do this is by subtracting this on both sides. Then we can do separable dy over 1 plus 4y square. then we can integrate both sides. Then what do we do next? This looks like arc tangent. And this one can be rewritten like so. To integrate the one on the left side, we can use u sub now. For this, u equals 2y, du is 2dy. And I can use another u sub here, u equals x squared, du is 2x dx. That negative can be taken outside. And let's see what is missing. I need a 2 here, and I put a half out there. We need 2x dx. You need a 2 here and 1 half out there. So the 1 half comes out. du over 1 plus u square. Negative 1 half. du over 1 plus u square. So the u on the right side is different than the u on the left side. These cancel out the 1 halves. You get 10 inverse of u here, which is 2y, equals negative 10 inverse of the u, which is x squared. And don't forget the plus c. Another thing a lot of people forget on the test. Is the initial value condition. y of 1 is 0. So this means when x is 1, y is 0. So that's a zero. This is one plus C. This is zero. 10 inverse of one is pi over four. 
So that tells me C is pi over 4. And then we substitute it back into this equation. So we get 10 inverse of 2y equals negative 10 inverse of x squared plus pi over 4. Any questions about this? Oh, okay, real quick, Professor. So then we're just, after we got to the one solution that equals zero, then you gave us the new initial condition that y of one is zero, right? Yeah, that was so given. That's what we used to solve. Okay, okay, good, thanks.